Welcome to another step along the path to our own overly complicated earth shelter. This section starts with the gunite crew from last time filling in a couple footings for us before they left. These footings will support a two-tier retaining wall around this apse structure. Generally speaking, you would completely bury an apse at the back end of an earth shelter somewhere. They're very strong in that sort of compression, fully buried situation. Instead, I put windows in all of my apses, which makes them particularly difficult to bury. My idea here was to build a retaining wall around this apse, and then punch a window that went through both so I could have the best of both worlds. Full burial and have light. As usual, Sherry took care of the Blue Max elastomeric waterproofing while I got started on the block wall. My first mistake was positioning that perpendicular block like that. I just wasn't thinking about the second course at the time and I kind of messed up my running bond a bit, but not the end of the world. With curvy walls, you really want to lay things out first to avoid needing to cut much later. So I lay out all the blocks and I come back and mortar them in. I needed to cut the gunite out of that ledge to expose the front of the window buck or my window wouldn't install properly. By this point in the second layer I had realized my running bond problem and decided to just do better going forward. As a childhood Lego maniac I've always wanted to build something from concrete blocks. For the bathroom in a previous episode I'd use surface bonding. But here I was doing it the traditional way. Well, almost. The New American Gothic. I gotta say I was actually enjoying this part. Easy peasy and no forms required. For those who are wondering if these retaining walls were included in the engineering drawings, yes, yes they were. But with a novice builder, that's no guarantee of success. After the retaining walls were partway up, we started putting insulation between the apse and the retaining wall. The first four feet of the apse is basically just a cylinder, so simple curvature. After that, things get more complicated. At first I'd imagine slitting pieces of XPS so they would crack and curve, and then I could figure out how to fill those gaps later. But pretty soon we gave up on that and started cutting the strips into parallelograms, which we could orient in different ways to fit pretty well without custom cutting ahead of time. We basically glued them on with spray foam. After she got the idea, my mother took over as puzzle master with some help from the boys, and we continued with the wall. This top edge of the window dormer has simple curvature-ish, <laughs> so I ran a bunch of two-inch wide pieces through the table saw at, with a blade at an angle to give me sort of the right angle for, a, for an arch. Here we're filling the block cores with concrete and rebar, as per the engineering drawings. This rebar is to support the eyebrow over the window. Like the bedroom dormer eyebrows, this will be thermally separated from the inner wall so the building doesn't just radiate out all my heat. Theoretically, the only bridge between the inner and outer structure will be this lath and stucco across the window sill. Maybe I'll come back later with a concrete saw and cut through it and fill a little bit of the gap with rubber or something to really separate it. But for now, it'll do as a compromise. Anyway, I'm putting this lath on now to hold the stucco across that 4-inch insulation gap later. More filling block cores. This is really the hardest part of block construction, and only because we're mixing manually and lifting manually. We filled every second core all the way down to the footing. A 
As a side job along with the office apps, we also needed to insulate the mudroom roof. I'll probably need to redo half of this later, but I needed the back half done at least before I could bury the garage. We basically just laid down this insulation and then covered it with some used billboard vinyl. Specifically, we used a subway billboard in homage to our frequent subway lunches. I am open to sponsorship. I was really hoping that this would be the day that Google Maps would do an update of our satellite photo. Back to the insulation dome and you can see that we figured out a pretty good system. The small gaps don't matter as long as the insulation on the second layer can keep anything that conducts heat from filling those gaps. Air is a perfectly good insulator. I took over for the tricky bit at the top and did a few custom pieces to finish it up. The excavators were coming in just a few days and I still needed to get the eyebrow over that office dormer to hold the earth back. I welded together a framework from rebar and metal lath, ferro cement style, which is another building method that I've wanted to try ever since I first saw it. This shot also gives you a closer look at that insulation mosaic. Here you can see the insulation will completely separate the eyebrow from the inner concrete, so it won't just be a giant radiator fin. It's like a saddle blanket separating the rider and the saddle from the horse, without needing to drill into the horse. Then I just started slapping up concrete. It was basically a simple 1-2-3 mix made right on site, probably cost me about $11 for the whole bag. Getting it up there took some stamina, especially since we were racing against the setting sun at the end of a long day of laying blocks. But then the final smoothing and shaping was pretty easy. The next day, the concrete was mostly stiff enough to walk on, and my mother finished the final few custom pieces on the insulation mosaic. Here's how it looked at the end, sort of like modern art, but actually functional. We screwed some temporary wood boards to the retaining wall just to prevent the tearing of the waterproofing vinyls as we slid them over. And then we pulled another used billboard vinyl across the dome. I actually attached the vinyl to the vertical wall, but it didn't get well captured on video. We also did a second layer after the camera quit. The next day the excavator arrived. That'll be a whole big video coming soon, but I'll show this part now. Pause. Did you catch that? The high part of the retaining wall couldn't handle the lateral earth pressure and fell outward. Excavator was expert enough to catch it, and uh, they were very kind considering it was totally my screw-up that risked their lives. But they were, you know, talking about how we could save it and push it back up and uh, all that. But I knew it was too late and we just needed to let it go this time and start over properly. You can't tell from this angle, but later, while clearing away the rubble, it was pretty clear to me that the core fill had not gone all the way to the bottom. It probably also didn't help that the mortar on that section was less than a week cured. So the majority of the wall fell down in one piece, held together by those solid cores, with the blocks around the edge of it just breaking up as it tore out. As that big section separated from the rest, it even pulled the rebar out of the holes in the footing. We ended up deciding to go ahead with the rest of the fill because it was better cured, and I remembered being much more careful to get the concrete all the way to the bottom of the footings. And besides, if any more of the retaining wall was going to fail, now was a good time for that. Here the video picks up for my second try after cleaning up the mess and pondering the lessons from the first try. I started with shorter rebar pegs that I could grout into the holes while I could easily reach them. I also made sure to use ladder reinforcement between each and every course. As a bonus, for some of the layers I cut a groove in the top of the blocks and I put a piece of 3 8 rebar in, and then I welded the other end of the steel columns of the entryway that's hiding behind that insulation there. This was something I'd considered before but decided against it for thermal conductivity reasons, but now I decided it was worth it for the structural strength.
Partway up, and after giving the bottom half well over a week to cure, this time I backfilled and tamped in one foot layers with pieces of landscapers fabric and carpet after each layer. Again, sorry, no video on that. Then I continued on building the wall. Here you can see some sideways bricks that I put in to help hold the earth. It's sort of a silly short dead man idea. Not in the engineering drawings, and maybe I shouldn't have bothered with it, but I didn't think it would hurt. And then I finished up that section of wall. For the benefit of my neighbors who have to look at this every day, I decided to also cover up the lath, XPS, and spray foam with some stucco. Here I am again spending a lot of time filling all the cores with concrete, a slightly wetter mix this time to make sure it can go all the way to the bottom, and then poking it with rebar to help vibrate it down. That dog, named Sandy by the way, <laughs> loves hanging out up there. And finally, after some time for everything to cure, it was time to finish the backfilling. My skid steer isn't quite tall enough to dump it over the wall, so I had to empty the bucket with a shovel. Uh, we used some rocks to help keep the dirt from spilling back down. That one big rock was Sherry's, so I had to put it back where I found it. Then some topsoil. The next video is the long-awaited burial phase one. Hit subscribe and the notification bell to follow along or jump over to our Facebook site to see where we are now. More details can be found on our webpage, links in the doobly-doo.